have been able to find us on both channels. But this week we have a good buddy of ours here at 18 Strong. Our buddy, professional golfer Hayden Buckley, is going to be joining us in just a second to catch up on him and what he's been doing in this time of, you know, everybody kind of socially isolating, getting in his workouts, hopefully checking up on his golf practice and everything, so we're going to touch base with him in just a second. I do want to say thanks to our sponsors, as always, for the 18 Strong Podcast, which is Link Soul. If you want to check out all of the great products that Link Soul has, golf apparel, shorts, bags, golf gear, go to 18strong.com slash Link Soul to get your most updated coupon coupon code for 20% off of everything that Link Soul has. And if you didn't catch us in the last episode, we are doing a weekly giveaway of Link Soul gear. This past week, we were giving away the slip on shoes that they did with True Links Wear. And so I want to announce the winner for last week's giveaway, which is from our review of the week. It's ES Wife. The iTunes review says, I've been listening to the 18 Strong podcast for a couple years now. It's a must-have in any podcast library. Each episode is packed with great information and just the right amount of entertainment. I've purchased several programs from 18 Strong and use them as the base for my fitness. As a result of improved fitness, I've been able to enjoy the game I love more and even play a little bit better. So ES Wife, if you are seeing this, I want you to send an email to support at 18strong.com and in the subject line put Link Soul Winner and we're going to get you set up with your true Link's Wear shoes. Now for anyone listening that is interested in joining the next giveaway, here's how you win. You go to 18 Strong, the 18 Strong podcast in iTunes, you leave a rating and review and we will announce the winner every single week. Once again, if you want to check out all of their stuff, you can go to 18strong.com slash link soul all right i am going to bring in my buddy here hayden buckley hayden what's going on man what's going on jeff how you doing man i'm real good real good you've been keeping busy (laughs) you could say that yeah just you know you you kind of sleep in on purpose actually just woke up not long ago and uh you know just trying to find stuff to do during this time it's tough but you know it's also kind of good to to get a little time off and you know, focus on some more important things and be at home with the family. So I'm not, I'm not too disappointed. I think all of us are just trying to stay healthy. That's the biggest thing. So, you know, take it for what it is and and try to get the most out of it. So you're actually back home in Mississippi now, right? Yeah. It's a little colder too. I think, uh, I think it's like 55, right? I'm actually outside. It's, (laughs) it's a little chilly. I don't know why I chose outside for this, but uh, I don't think I had under 60 in the last five months down in Florida. I was in South Florida. So uh, this is a little, it's a little different, but we've had some good weather, just a lot of rain here. We had a lot of storms last night. Uh, um, golf course will probably be wet for another week, and, you know, we just got off the path on Sunday, so it's kind of disappointing, but part of it, and, you know, kind of looking forward to, you know, hopefully the next month or two, maybe getting back out there. I don't know. We'll, we'll kind of see how it goes. How much have you been able to get out and practice and play with everything going on? I mean, as much as I can, you know, I think we're kind of lucky to be in a little bit of a smaller town here. And, uh, you know, we've had, you know, luckily, to, lucky to have the golf course open as much as possible, you know, minus the weather. But uh, just I'm sleeping in a lot. You know, I, this is <laughs> this is almost early for me, which sounds crazy, but it's been a little cold in the morning. So I've just kind of slept through it, worked out in the mornings and then gone out to the golf course about noon one o'clock every day and stay there till dark you know it's pretty it's pretty about six or seven in the afternoon in the evening and um just as much as i can trying to play um practice is a good thing for me too but it's it's one of those things where i don't want to wear myself out practicing you know seven eight hours a day like i would you know i'd say if it was it was more in season um and maybe i had a few off weeks i'd be practicing a lot because you know during the season you're playing all the time you don't get a lot of time to work on your technique. And, uh, you know, when you do, you're not trying to think too much about it because you're in tournaments. So, you know, I think this is a good time to kind of, you know, look at some of that technique stuff. I think I've been, you know, focusing a little bit on my short game technique, um, something that I've wanted to improve a lot over the last few months, but also just going to play. I mean, knowing that, you know, maybe in a month we resume, I need to be ready to play and I got a few things to figure out. So, uh, it, it's tough, you know, right now, just not knowing when the next tournament is, especially for me being in the situation where, 
you know, I'm not guaranteed to get a start, but I could. Is there some weird, there's a very weird, um, you know, they're, they're talking about a lot of things that could impact me in a good way or in a bad way. So it's just kind of a big question mark right now. What are some of the things that they've been kind of kicking around or that have you, that you've heard through the grapevine? Uh, they look at, I think they're looking at, you know, maybe expanding the fields of tournaments. So, you know, you were talking about, let's say we resume in a month is what they say. Uh, you know, we could, there's a very good chance that, you know, instead of the tournaments being 156 players, it could be 200 players but playing them on two golf courses. So, you know, you're a little more spread out, which, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of, there's probably a lot of, you know, different guidelines they have to follow, uh, you know, with all this going on. But, you know, it's, you're talking about two golf courses, more players, which would be huge for me. Yeah. I'm getting in, you know, I'm probably going to get in some tournaments. Um, you know, but same thing, you know, cut after two days and it's like a normal tournament after that. But, you know, this is huge. If this happens, I don't, I don't know if it can happen. And I, I think we're still on a lockdown here for the next month, um, or at least till the end of the month, uh, you know, a, a stay at home order or whatever. So I don't know. It, it's, it's tough, but that's, that's the biggest thing I heard or that I took away was, Hey, you could have a very good chance of playing if it resumes in a month, you know, due to this expanded field. So before all of this kind of started, what, what was kind of your game plan? What was your, your status? Just to kind of update the listeners as to, you know, what you were thinking of, of doing as far as where you're going to go play. I know, obviously, you played in, in the Honda on the PGA Tour through a Monday qualifier. Um, we're talking a lot about corn ferry stuff. So where did you stand before? And then has that kind of changed? Obviously, you don't know what's, what's going to happen. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I finished sixth in Canada last summer, which, you know, is great, but it was also disappointing you know, kind of going into the last event, being in fifth by, <clears throat> you know, I think almost twenty thousand dollars. So like, really feeling like the fifth spot was almost locked up, unless some guy, you know, a few spots around me won the tournament, and that's what happened. <laughs> and so, you know, I lost by about five hundred bucks, um, which you know still is a good thing because I got to you know Q school finals immediately, just straight through, which which is huge for guys that haven't played Q school, knowing you know, leaving that tournament in September, early September, going home and knowing that, you know, you don't have to play Q school until December and it's finals, you know, it's probably the greatest, it's one of the best feelings. I mean, it's better than anything you can describe. Uh, but, but also knowing that that fifth spot would have been, you know, guaranteed corn fairy starts hundred uh, percent. But, you know, I, you know, I kind of used that to motivate me a little last fall. I, you know, got in the gym a lot practiced hard I was playing really good golf and then got to Q school and just forgot how to play golf I mean it was it was one of those things where you know I played this golf course down in Orlando Orange County National that's not a hard golf course wide open fairways pretty long I'd say you know fairly long and I don't feel like it's long because I'm hitting it farther um, but pretty long golf course and you know I moved down to Florida in November so everything was going right for me and just it's one week and it's, it's a few days of, of bad putting. And next thing I know, I don't really have starts. Um, it was looking like, you know, I think I finished 85th or something at Q school. So it was looking like maybe, you know, in about a month or so, if the season would have kept going, I might've gotten a few starts. Um, you know, obviously that this all kind of pushed that away, but, um, you know, I was playing Monday qualifiers. I was close on a few. I missed a few by like one or two. And then obviously got in the Honda uh, not not long ago. And, you know, I really thought that would be a huge chance to, you know, make the cut, maybe play well on the weekend and could change some things for me. You know, if you play well enough, kind of earn enough points and, you know, might get me to Corn Ferry Finals or get might earn me a car. You, I mean, you never really know what it could do. And unfortunately, you know, I didn't play well on the weekend. But, uh, you know, it was one of those tournaments where, you know, I really didn't feel ready for the tournament. It was kind of a, uh, you know, the whole week before I was a little sore. My body hurt. I uh, didn't practice much and then show up to the Monday and shoot 66 and get in, um, which is what happens. So, you know, for me, I think it's just staying healthy. If I can stay healthy, have a healthy body, I feel like I can play anywhere. Uh, but, you know, the way things go, I just didn't play well on the weekend. So now I'm kind of back to, you know, when am I going to get a start? It's, it's kind of up in the air. Uh, right before all this happened, I was actually driving back up from Florida. Uh, the corn ferry was supposed to be in Louisiana, so I drove way too long. I actually played a Monday qualifier on a Monday, 
obviously, for the Punta Cana PGA Tour event, which is like an off-week event that got canceled recently. Uh, it was blowing like 30 miles an hour all day. Didn't make it, whatever. So I drove immediately like 12 hours to Mobile, Alabama, stayed the night, drove six more hours the next morning, Tuesday morning, to Louisiana, had a mini tour event on Wednesday. <laughs> it was terrible. Uh, Wednesday through Saturday, and then had a Monday qualifier that Monday at the same golf course. So that's why I came back. I was on the way back already for, you know, Corn Ferry qualifiers. I think it was Louisiana for a few weeks, and then Alabama, you know, Tennessee, all that. Uh, and about, I actually missed the cut in the, in the mini tour event, but, uh, um, you know, make the Honda, make the Honda cut easy, you know, miss the, miss the mini tour event, you know, by like five, I think it was right. terrible. Um, you know, and so I'm sitting there like, what do I do now? You know, where do I go? And so luckily I lived like five, six hours from, you know, where I was in Louisiana and everything started getting canceled and they just said, Hey, come home. I'd already packed up my apartment down in Florida. It's like, all right, come home. Let's just, you know, wait it out. And I really, honestly, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I was kind of like, okay, I'll go home for a few weeks and then we'll get back to it. No problem. And then all of a sudden people are like, Hey, this is serious. We need to stay home. Um, you might be here for a while. So luckily I packed up all my stuff and I'm, I'm good to go. I'm good to stay here for a while. And, and I've been here since just kind of practicing and, and working out as much as I can. What's your workout schedule been looking like? How have you adapted to, you know, being at home? Do you have a facility there? I know I've, I've seen some pictures of you just out kind of on the patio, right where you're sitting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got this, this guy that, that, you know, he's given me a few decent workouts and this guy at 18 strong, but, uh, no, I actually went kind of, it was kind of sketchy, but I actually went to the gym like the first week I was back kind of before everything shut down. Um, and then somebody looked at me and said, Hey, you might not want to, you might not want to go there just to be safe. Mm -hmm. And so I actually had, um, I had a few weights at home, a couple dumbbells, a kettlebell, a mat and a couple bands, you know, just not ideal, but something I think that something I love about our workouts is I feel like I can get a lot done with very minimal stuff. You know, I, I don't really use bars, um, you know, if I'm squatting, I'm using dumbbells or bar or uh, kettlebells, you know, any kind of bench press. I'm just using um, dumbbells like everything's very simple, I'd say, but it works. And so I've actually I was kind of I felt like I could still get the same work in at home as I do in a gym, you know, minus maybe like a, you know, a, a stationary bike or I actually started riding a bike, my brother's bike around the neighborhood a couple miles uh, before my workouts to kind of get the same feel. And it's a lot harder on a real bike than it is a stationary yeah. bike. But, uh, but no, I'm just on my back porch. Uh, and luckily I had a guy, my gym owner reach out and he gave me a few more weights and a bench. I actually have a bench now, which is pretty sweet. Oh, sweet. I'll have to send you a picture of that later, but, uh, I got a bench and, you know, weights and I actually just ordered, uh, some su is it super flex? I think you yeah. told me about it. Yeah. Super flex bands. So I can, you know, put those in a, in a door and, and do all kind of different stuff. And, uh, it, it's been different for sure. You know, it's harder. It's a little bit harder to kind of walk out your back door and, and look at, you know, a little, you know, 10 square foot area and, <laughs> and say, all right, I'm about to work out. And, um, it's definitely been tougher outside too. I think it's been, a, it's actually been warmer here before today. And, you know, you get outside and start sweating within five minutes and, uh, you know, so it's been, it's been tough, but it's something I really wanted to focus on, especially now just knowing, you know, this is a time where I could play golf every day and, and really improve my game. But also I think it's a lot more important to look at your body. I think that's, that's what all the, all the guys that, that I've seen, are really focusing on their body and staying healthy and, you know, especially the guys at the top because they know, you know, they know their game's there. They, they know their game will be, will be there when they get back. And then right now it's just how do I get back healthy and not sit on the couch all day like I did yesterday. So it, it's tough, but it's, it's something, it's kind of a challenge that I've, I've kind of enjoyed. Yeah. What's with everything kind of being mixed up and changed and, you know, we're, you're at home all day. Have you found that it's been tough to find, motivation to to get your workouts in do you find that kind of going in waves or you know i i've talked to a lot of different people players non-players and just everybody in general you know they're 
it's like well, you've got this extra time, you've got this the ability to do some of this stuff, but also it's it's natural to when you're at home to just kind of be in a little bit more like lazy mode, almost like you mentioned about yesterday, kind of Easter Sunday. You know, uh, what's it been like? Has it been kind of an up and down, or has it have you been able to find that that passion? No, I've been good. You know, I, I was actually thinking about this the other day because it reminds me of college. I remember somebody telling me, one of my teammates told me, uh, you know, we were exempt through a tournament because of how we played in the last tournament, whatever, you know, we had different rules. Um, you know, we belonged in the top five and we had earned the spot. So, you know, we were sitting there qualifying one day and, uh, you know, he looked at me and he said, man, I'm just, I'm not motivated. I need something to play for. And I thought about that for a while. You know, that's something I've, I've kind of remembered over time. And it was like, it's like, I don't, you know, I, I think naturally I've just never needed something to play for because I know what I'm playing for. You know, it's like we're at practice. Every time we play is a chance to get better. So so it's the same here. It's kind of, you know, yeah, it's it's easy to, to, you know, I think taking a rest day like yesterday was just a part of my program. Yeah, that's something that, that we've talked about. We, we're, I'm kind of on like a four- or five-day program uh, of weightlifting and um, strength training, uh, you know, with stretches all, all in between there. But um, I don't know, the motivation thing for me has never been – it's never been tough. You know, it's like I know that every chance I can to work out or practice is going to help me in the long run. So, you know, it, I shouldn't need extra motivation to do that. Really, playing bad at Q school was all the motivation I needed. And, and really, that all came from, I think, two years ago when we met. You know, I played in the PGA Tour event uh, in Mississippi. And I think it was, you know, it was about like this 50 degrees, raining, wet, just miserable. And I hit the ball like 285. I'm sitting here watching Cameron Champ played in front of me, you know, hit the ball 330 in these cold conditions. And I'm thinking, man, there's no, 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 like, no wonder he's winning this golf tournament. He's got wedge into every hole and I'm hitting seven iron. You know, it's like I can't get to any par fives. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's not hard for me to, you know, to think about that and just say, okay, I need to make a difference. And that's when I reached out to you. Actually, somebody introduced me to you. Uh, while I was still up in school in Missouri and you know just like that it was it was like a new it was like a new life for me and it sounds crazy but it's like all of a sudden I worked out all winter came back that spring and like I didn't have status or anything uh, but I played Monday qualifiers and I was shooting like 65 in every qualifier missed by one lost in the playoff got in two you know lost in the Honda playoff last year actually um but like I'm hitting the ball farther, par fives are easy. I'm getting on in two. Like all these things started happening to where, okay, you know, if I just keep working out, like who knows what's going to happen. And sure enough, played Canada last year. And I think I was second on the tour in par five scoring. And that wasn't because of great putting or great chipping. It was hitting long drives and hitting long four irons on the green in two and two putting for birdie a lot. And so, you know, people, you know, people ask about the motivation thing and, you know, two years ago, playing the PGA Tour for the first time, you know, realizing I wasn't even close. Um, you know, and, and people say, well, you know, this guy hits at 280 and he's won on tour, but, you know, I'd rather hit at 320 and win on tour because it's going to be a lot easier hitting wedges into par par fours and getting on par fives and then relying on, you know, seven irons and making every putt I look at. So, you know, I just... I've listened to a lot of people that, that know what they're talking about and, you know, distance is huge. And that's something I think everybody thinks I actually heard this on the range the other day at my home course, you know, somebody talking about, man, I wish I could just, you know, hit 20 yards shorter and straight rather than, you know, where I hit it now and missing the fairway all the time. I want to say, you know, part of that's true. I think it depends on how big your misses are, but like, I'll take it, you know, a hundred yards out from the rough all day over, you know, 140 from the or 150 from the fairway a lot you know it's there's there's those studies that, out there that, that talk about you know distance versus accuracy and and my coach my swing coach is big on uh you know as much distance as he can i mean that's why dj and brooks and all these guys are the top players in the world uh you know nobody that hits at 280s up there you know top top 10 in the world so um you know it's it's been big for me and all the, the 18 strong is has really made a difference i love it so now that you've played in two PGA Tour events, you've made the cut in both of those PGA Tour events. Obviously, I know this this past one didn't end up on the weekend like you wanted it to. But what 
what's the big takeaway now that it it wasn't just one you know it's not like oh i made one and that was cool it's like no i made two and i made the cut in both of them what's kind of the the big takeaway or a couple big takeaways um and and what's maybe something that you know like this is where i gotta this is where i gotta put in the work yeah i think the first one you know like i talked about in mississippi you know it was just turned pro there was a lot of learning there it was something where you know, nobody expected much out of me, but it was also a smaller tournament. You know, it was one where, you know, I think I had the biggest crowd on Thursday and Friday of 40 people because it was three hours from my house, and uh, which was funny. You know, everybody's like, who's this kid? You know, <laughs> but And Cameron Champ was playing right in front of me, and nobody's watching him. It was funny. Nobody watched him on Thursday. I think he shot 65, and then everybody kind of watched him on Friday. But I still had a great crowd, a lot of friends, family, all that stuff. Um, but it was a learning, you know, it was just all, I was thinking, oh, well, this is going to be a good experience. That was kind of the mindset going in. I got an exemption into it. Um, you know, I didn't really know what to expect and, you know, shot 75 the first day and was like, oh gosh, I know this course a lot better than that. Like I shouldn't be playing this bad and came back with an incredible 67 on Friday. So it was a huge learning experience and then played poor on the weekend. Um, but I think this you know, but made the cut, right? You know, so it was, it was positive, very positive. And then this one, you know, I've kind of felt like since September, since Canada, I've really, I I feel like I've gotten a lot better even since Canada, and I played great in Canada. I think I've gotten stronger, I've gotten longer. I think my short game's improved. Everything's improving, but I wasn't playing well. You know, I, I saw, you know, I played bad at the end of Canada, the last tournament. I didn't play very well at Q school finals. And then, you know, I've kind of been just, you know, back and forth on mini tour events, you know, I won a very small mini tour event and, you know, had a few decent finishes, but nothing, nothing was really telling me like, Hey, I'm playing really good golf, but it's also Florida in, in the winter. It's, <laughs> you know, it's windy. The ball's not going anywhere. It's tough to play down there. And so, you know, I got in the Honda and it was kind of like a, I mean, it was weird. I, I just, I still don't know how to describe it because, I didn't feel ready for the golf tournament, but I knew my game was ready, if that makes sense. You know, I didn't quite practice leading up to the week. You know, I said that before. Um, but I felt good. My body felt good. And that's just not normally how I do it. You know, usually I'm practicing really hard before tournaments. Uh, but when you're in these Monday qualifiers, you're just trying to survive. And, you know, I played in the morning and sat around all afternoon and was just hoping nobody shot six. Uh, and two other guys end up shooting six. Uh, but we all got in, so that was good. And, you know, it's a long week too. So like no one, you know, I left on Saturday, practice round Sunday, you know, you play all day Monday and then you have a practice round Tuesday. That's all you get. Um, because of pro ams. And so I'm practicing Wednesday and I'm thinking, all right, this is going to be a tough golf course. Like I saw it, I saw the weather, it's going to be windy. Um, and it's a big golf course. This is a big golf tournament. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't Mississippi anymore. Um, which that Sanderson Farms has turned into a bigger event now, but I said there's there's 50 people watching the putting green. You know this is you know and, and people don't bother me, but it was just like you kind of realize like this is this is the real deal. Um, and I think besides the first tee shot, like normal, uh, I felt I felt great out there. You know I birdied the first hole of the tournament. It was I pulled my shot real. It was a back left pin on the first hole, and I pulled it really hard left. Um, but it worked out and I made my putt and, you know, I was just kind of rolling. I felt good. And, uh, you know, it felt like I belonged out there, you know, so it was a lot different. Sanderson farms two years ago, I was kind of, um, you know, I was kind of learning like, you know, how to interact with my caddy and, you know, how to manage a crowd and how not to get distracted by a crowd. And then out here, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there on Friday in the woods on, on the first hole, the 10th hole, and there's 50 people around my ball, you know, kind of like you see on TV. And so for me, this is the biggest, you know, definitely the biggest crowd I've played in front of. I um, mean, you know, I never got to play any big, you know, huge amateur tournaments. I didn't make it very far in the USAM, um, you know, never had crowds like this. And so I'm sitting there just trying to take it all in. And honestly, I felt good. And so it was a learning experience, but I also felt like this is my chance to make a difference in my career, you know, and uh, you know, I think after the first two days, I thought I was going to do something because I, I shot two over in two days and felt like I shot 10 under uh, just just how hard that golf course was. And, you know, given the conditions and, you know, birdie and 17 three days in a row and 
I just, it was a, it was a crazy experience, but also, you know, it felt so right. It felt so normal. And so, um, it's hard to, you know, distinguish between the two of, of, was there any different, was it any different playing in this, this event versus the Sanderson or, or all PGA tour events the same? Like, I don't really know, you know, I'm sure us opens and stuff like that are going to be way different than, uh, than most of your PGA tour events. But, um, yeah, I mean, it just, it felt right. It was, it was a weird, it was a weird feeling, but it just felt normal. Um, obviously I didn't play great on the weekend a little, <laughs> my coach, as my coach said, it's better to shoot 80 on Saturday than Friday. And so, uh, that was a, it was a tough one. Yeah, I haven't shot 80 in a while, but, um, you know, part of it, you know, I, I, I tell myself I didn't take advantage of my situation. I didn't, you know, I had an opportunity there on the weekend again, and I didn't take advantage of it. Uh, but part of that's just, you know, a bad day, one bad day, one bad swing, uh, you know, one missed putt is kind of the difference in, you know, maybe having a good weekend and not, and I don't know, it's a big learning process, but it was, it was pretty fun. I mean, to have people yelling at you and, you know, you kind of get used to the noise and, and people just kind of making you laugh and, you know, trying to stay focused is the hardest thing for sure. What would you say was on Saturday that, you know, kind of, got you off track or, or what was it about your game that day that was different than the two, two days before? Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. I, uh, man, I was one under through three. I think it, the toughest part was, you know, I finished, I finished really late on Friday. Um, uh, was one of the last tee times on Friday, uh, made a huge putt on my 17th, uh, to kind of get one inside the cut. So the last hole was fun. You know, I knew, I kind of knew I was in, it was an easy par four. I was on the front side there. Um, you know, and afterwards my swing coach was there, we were celebrating, you know, everything, you know, it was, it was a big, it felt different. You know, when I made the cut at, at Sanderson, um, you know, it was kind of that, you know, congratulations things, but here it was, Hey, we're in a good spot. Let's go. You know, it's not, there's no more congratulations. We're not trying to just make cuts anymore. Um, let's go, let's go do something this weekend. You know, why not? I'm playing great golf. I just shot two over on probably one of the hardest golf courses I've seen in a while. And, you know, greens felt like glass and, uh, the winds blowing all day. And I just, I didn't miss many shots. I had one or two that I wish I could get back, but I didn't miss much. And, you know, Saturday I wasn't tired, but I mean, it's a, it's a long weekend. And so you really got to grind it out. And, you know, I'm one under through three and I'm feeling good. And, um, 80 yards out on my fourth hole and I chunk it just not a hard golf shot. I mean, it's not a hard golf shot and, it's one of my favorite yardages and I chunk it, uh, miss the green, don't get up and down. You know, I kind of, I, I was like, all right, we're good. Let's, let's kind of keep going. And then the very next hole, it just, the only problem is the golf course gets harder. The first four holes you can really take advantage of. And then the golf course just gets hard. And I think number five, uh, I hit the middle of the green on a par three, lagged it up there, left it three feet short, had a downhill putt, uh, lift out, had six feet, lift that out, tapped in for my double and just it went downhill quick and then you're looking at six is like i think the fairway's about this it looks like it's this wide with water on the left and bunkers on the right which are dead so it's just uh man i just it's hard to describe and then the whole back nine is just an incredible golf course it's it's nine of the best holes i've seen uh just every hole feels like there's a grandstand on it uh it feels like a stadium almost every hole uh it's tough and you know, I, I don't know what really happened. Obviously, the four, you know, if that par putt goes in on the par three, I'm even par through five. Um, things change. But, you know, at the same time, I very well could have got up there and pulled it in the water on six and, you know, made double there. So there's a lot of things you can look back on. But, um, you know, it just it wasn't it wasn't there. I mean, a lot of guys struggle. I think the guy I played with Saturday, you know, I think I shot 80. He shot 76, 77. And, so we, you know, we struggled. I think a lot of guys struggled and looking back, even pars, you know, a, a career changer. If you, if you shoot even for four days, you know, that's, you don't say that a lot in golf. Uh, and so I think that's like a major championship, but I don't know. It, it was, it was tough, but part of it. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to have many, many more opportunities out there, my friend. What have, I, have they said that, are they going to have Monday qualifiers in these first tournaments that they bring back for the PJ tour? Have you guys heard anything about that? I've heard rumors. I, you know, I think I've seen tweets about no Monday cues, which I don't believe, but 
you know, it kind of makes sense if they're going to, especially for us, if they're going to expand fields, you know, there's no way they're going to have Monday queues. But I don't know. I think that's all up in the air. I think they're trying to think what's best for, for the guys on the tour. Um, I've heard things about, you know, maybe rolling over to next year to where there's no Q school in the fall. And, uh, you know, because there's guys right now that are, you know, top five on the Corn Ferry points list that, that probably have their card locked up. Most likely, you know, they're, they're pretty close, especially the guy in first. I think he's, you know, won an event, maybe came in second and another. And, um, you know, he's looking at a PGA tour card and how do you make it fair for him, you know, and, and everybody else. I, I, I've heard that's, that's just what some people have said is if we don't get started in the next month or two, I mean, what are they going to do? You can't have a, you know, a 10 event season and, um, and then obviously Canada, you know, PGA, I think somebody asked me on my Instagram, am I going back to Canada next year? Uh, you know, I've thought about it. Uh, it's something that before this, I think if I wasn't going to get any starts or if I got some starts and didn't play well, I was going to look at going back up there. I think the, the thing we all say is we don't ever want to go back. You know, nobody wants to go. We love it up there. It's beautiful. Um, some of my favorite, some of my favorite golf courses are up there. They're all really pretty. Weather's perfect. Um, but we don't know every time we leave, you know, we don't want to come back. That's what we say to the guys. And I remember leaving the tour championship last year and saying bye to all the guys that run the event and run the tour and saying, I hope I never see you again. You know, that's kind of the, yeah, right. the, the understood thing, and, you know, unless it's like a, you know, at the masters or somewhere crazy, but um, you know, we, we hope to never go back up there. So I don't know. It, it's tough right now. And I think that's delayed too. I think the first few events there are delayed maybe, um, and it could be a shorter season. So, you know, all this, the biggest goal with all this is if there is a Q school next year, or whatever happens, you know, I don't want to go back to Q school next year. So what's the best thing for me? You know, do I think I can go back to Canada, you know, and win the tour? Maybe. Do I think I can go back in top 10 and get to finals again? Of course. You know, I did it last year. I think I can do it again this year. But also, you know, I know where I belong in my head. Obviously, a lot of guys probably say that they belong on the tour or whatever. But I'm just starting to see it slowly and slowly, you know, just with the way I played last summer. Obviously, Q School didn't play well, but, you know, played pretty well in some Corn Ferry events in the past. And then the PGA Tour events, just knowing I belong out there, it's just a matter of time. So it's hard to stay patient, but you have to. We've got a couple questions coming in off of Facebook here. And for anybody watching this live on Facebook or YouTube, just know that if you if you throw a comment in the post right under the video, we'll see your comment and you can ask Hayden questions live here on the air. So I've got one from Tracy here that says, what's what's been the biggest transition for you when you turn pro and do you have any advice for younger players? So biggest transition. Oh man, that's, that's tough. I think, from at least from college, you know, college and AM stuff to pro, I think the biggest thing is, is <laughs> you got to go low. I mean, that's, I hate to say that, but like in college, I think my, I think my last year I had like a 69.5 scoring average or something, which was great. I was playing really well, winning a lot of tournaments, you know, three day events shooting like 10, 11, 12 under, you know, which was really good. But then all of a sudden you get to pro and it's like, you better go deep deep like you gotta go so deep and um and a lot of people say well are these golf you know i think we're talking about mainly like canada you know your process of getting up to to corn Ferry pga tour you know everybody's got to go through q school just about um if not you're playing monday qualifiers and you know, everybody knows you got to shoot six seven eight under par and around there so um i think the biggest transition though is is <laughs> If you're looking at, you know, kind of the pro lifestyle, it's not as pretty as amateur stuff. It's not as pretty as college. College, you're, you know, everything's paid for by your team and, you know, you're eating nice meals and uh, you're going to these incredible golf courses. Amateur stuff, too. We played, I've played some of the best golf courses. I mean, I played a USAM at, at Pebble and Riviera and Bel Air and Spyglass. I mean, that's, that's, you don't see that. You don't see that in pro golf until you make it. So I think it's a big, you have to really understand that, you know, it really is a grind. It's not going to be pretty. I mean, I remember playing first stage of Q school that, that year, actually right before I met you, right before I played Sanderson farms there, when I turned right, when I turned pro, uh, this was the perfect introduction of pro golf. 
I was in uh, Nebraska City, Nebraska, which is about five hours from Columbia. I was up in school still and playing first stage of Q school. And there is like a Pizza Hut and a Wendy's in this town. Seriously. And then a Holiday Inn, which is where we all stayed. Um, so, you know, you're talking about just not eating well. It's hard to eat. I mean, there's a Walmart, so you can maybe get some 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 lunch meat or something to eat. But, I mean, you're talking about not getting to eat like you want to, um, you know, stay in the middle of nowhere, actually playing a great golf course, but, you know, grinding it out in this terrible conditions, which everybody knows. You know, if you play high school golf, you know what terrible conditions are. Um, but, yeah, I think that's the biggest transition for me was just understanding that things are going to be harder. I'm on my own. I don't have a coach. You know, I was lucky. My, You know, my mom traveled with me everywhere for amateur stuff, you know, college stuff. We had our team there. And then all of a sudden you're just kind of thrown into the into the fire here by yourself trying to grind it out through Q school, which is kind of the hardest. You know, I think it's the hardest stretch of tournaments out there is going through Q school, knowing what it's for. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's different. I don't think it's something to be scared of. I think it's just kind of knowing everybody's got to go through it. Um, for me, it was, it was, it's still a long process. I'm still going through, I feel like I'm still transitioning and I don't feel like I've ever get used to it. Um, you know, as you drive, as I'm driving 12 hours to play a mini tour, 15 hours to play a mini tour event, uh, the next day. You know, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of ugly behind the pro golf scene that nobody sees, you know, unless you're one of those guys that, that makes it immediately, you know, there's a, a special few guys that, uh, that make it through Q school the first year and, and get on the corn ferry and, uh, and have success and get their tour card. You know, it doesn't happen a lot, but you just got to realize that, that most likely you're going to end up playing some mini tour events, no matter what, you know, I've played a lot of good mini tour events with some great players who've made millions of dollars in their career. And so at some point you're probably going to play these ugly, you know, drive into the middle of nowhere, playing golf tournaments, and you just got to embrace it and enjoy it. What, tell me a little bit about just kind of like the sponsorship aspect, especially at, at the stage that you are or are coming up from, um, because I think, you know, people see, oh, he's a pro golfer, he's, he's going to have all these sponsors, but that, you know, like that, that falls on you to go out and get that stuff, and how did that look for you as you're transitioning into the pro ranks? Yeah, you know, I... I say it all the time. I think there's, it's all about who, you know, always. Um, I think I've always been someone to say that, you know, good golf or well, my coach says it water finds its level. Um, and you know, and good golf will kind of, you know, pave the way for everything else. Um, I think there is some aspect of, of reaching out to people and saying, Hey, this is who I am. You know, that's why I do stuff with you. That's why I do. Uh, you know, that's why I like to post on my Facebook and, uh, you know, let people know what I'm doing. And, you know, I've been lucky to have, kind of a i think they're they're a regional bank but a, they're very local for me a lot of guys that i know bankrupt south um they reached out to me last year and said hey we want to sponsor you like we see what you're doing we love what you're doing um, and a lot of that's just building relationships you know i play golf with a couple of the guys that work there um you know reaching out to them hanging out with them just you know showing them who you are and, and especially i think they love seeing and you know, sponsors love seeing what you do off the golf course. Just knowing who you are off the golf course as well, because I think people see you and uh, they watch the, you know, they see that you play golf every day, and it's like, what does he do outside the course, or who is he outside the course? Um, you know, and sponsors care about everything, and you know, that's the only one I have. You know, that's <laughs> really the only one I have. And um, you know, I feel like I've played really good golf, and you know, I was like, man, maybe sponsors will be calling me every second, and you know, I finished sixth in Canada. Like, somebody's gonna want to, you know pay me to play and all this stuff and you know i do have an agent as well you know there's uh a lot of guys out here have agents that, that do that for them uh that, that reach out to people and it's kind of a process where hey we need you to play better you know that's a lot of companies will say that to you you know we need you to make it on the corn ferry tour and have guaranteed starts or we're not going to do anything for you you know and, and i think most guys as well you know once you turn pro and start playing well um, if you're committed to a company like a golf company, like I'm, I'm with Titleist and Footjoy, and uh, love what they do. You know, love the clubs. The, the driver's been great. Uh, but you show your commitment to them, and they they really take care of you. You know, I showed up at the Honda, and you know, one of the guys that one of the Titleist reps was also in Canada this summer a little bit, and you know, we have that relationship. We built that relationship in Canada. 
Um, and then I see them there and, you know, there's, there's hats everywhere. There's gloves, balls, um, any club you want, you get on the truck and, you know, you can fix your, I ordered some new wedges and you know, there's all these things that happen because of good golf. So, uh, you know, I always just say, look, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to play good golf and whoever comes to me comes to me. And that's just kind of a, <laughs> it's, it's a weird, it's a very weird process. You know, I think, you know, you maybe think you're playing better than you are, but there's also a thousand other kids in the same position I am. You know, I, I, I want to say that I'm, you know, I feel like I'm one of the top ones out there. I think that's everybody's mindset. But, um, you know, I think in the eyes of sponsors, there's a lot of kids out there and they're just waiting for somebody to break through. And you got to be marketable. That's the biggest thing, too. You got to, you know, show your personality and, and be out there and, um, you know, be somebody that they want with their brand. So it's it's a fun process. I think it's different. Um, and it's, you know, it's something that hopefully continues to get better if I can get back out there and play with making the Honda. Did, did you get anybody inquire about anything or did your agent then, you know, was, was he able to reach out to anybody or, you know, did, does that even move the needle at all? Maybe, you know, I think making the cut says something. I think it was a tough, it was a tough two days. And, you know, I remember a lot of people were saying, Oh, you beat Brooks Kepka and Ricky and all these guys, which, you know, doesn't matter. You know, for me, it doesn't matter. I guess it's cool for them to see it. Um, maybe to kind of compare, but also, you know, one week is one week, you know, there's guys that I feel like, you know, I played bad at Q school and it was just one week and, you know, maybe a buddy of mine beat me and I looked at him and said, man, you know, you're not better than me, you know, I, as a joke, but, you know, feeling like, you know, one week doesn't really mean much to me, but it can change your life. But comparison, you know, in comparison to other players, one week's not a big deal for me. Um, you know, it would have been nice if I could have played well on the weekend and beat some guys and said, hey, I beat this guy over four days. Uh, I grinded it out. But, um, yeah, not much. I mean, I'm sure it's it's something I can throw in there. You know, it's something where in the future if we're talking to people and say, look, you know, I'm, I'm two for two on cuts and, you know, I'm trending up a little bit and I played played well in Canada and, and all these things. You know, it's something to throw throw into the resume, I guess you could say. But, but nothing – Nobody was calling my phone the next day and uh, maybe a few like, Hey man, tough, tough weekend, but congrats. That was kind of my, kind of the only texts or calls I got, but you know, it's part of it. Cool. I got a question here from the veterans golf association of Ohio it says, uh, you talked about distance. Is that the biggest factor in making cuts or is it the short game? Love it. Um, I mean, I could point you to <laughs> point you to the. I think there's a guy on Twitter, Lou Stagner. It's a he's a big golf stats guy, and he could he could tell you all the all the answers. But um, I think I think it just depends on the player. You know, I think I know a guy. I know a couple guys that I played with in Canada that were, you know, obviously Canada was a little bit shorter golf courses, and um, that didn't hit. They didn't hit it far, but they had incredible short games. And mine wasn't. I don't think my short game really got where I wanted until this, this winter. Um, and it's still a process, but it didn't really get where it needed to be until this winter. And so I watched these kids hit it a lot shorter than me and chip and putt it way better than me. And, you know, we, you know, we shoot the same scores or whatever it was, but I'm hitting the ball so well, I'm thinking, man, I, I deserve to be beating these kids, you know, a hundred percent. And there's some of my, my good friends, you know, I actually reached out to some of them and said, Hey, you know, teach me how to chip and <laughs> show me how to chip or putt or whatever it was. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's a combination of everything, obviously. I, I don't think you can really say, you know, one thing is way better than the other, but I do think distance, if you can have distance with accuracy, I think and you think about Rory McIlroy, just how incredible of a driver of the ball he is. Um, for me, it was distance more so like going from hitting it 280 because I got hurt in college is what most people don't know my junior year about a year before I met you um tore muscle in my back so I was hitting it you know I was out for three months in the fall right during the season I came back and I was hitting it like 270 seriously I was in a driver I was poking it out there letting it roll if it ever rained I had no chance and um I think it was just going from that 270 280 distance to hitting it 300 yards on average uh, that's what people don't realize like everybody can get it out there every once in a while but averaging 300 yards was 
you know, I think which is about my average, uh, that was huge. You know, you're talking about a five, uh, par fives being 540, 550. You know, if you're hitting at 300 yards, you're inside of 250 all the time. I mean, I'm, I've got four irons, hybrids, whatever it is. I mean, the game gets easier. But then you can say, okay, like if I'm missing the greens and I can't chip or putt, then, then it's no point, right? You know, I'm making a lot of pars on par fives. But that's why I'm saying it's a little bit of a mixture of, the, of both of them. But having that distance is what created the opportunity for me to make birdies, get up and down for birdie and two putt for birdie. So I think, you know, just looking back, you know, I averaged 4.25, I think, on par fives in Canada. Um, and if looking at uh, the Honda, there was only two par fives. I think it's three and 18. And three was straight down wind. It was pretty easy. I actually blocked one in the water the first day. I was one under through two, blocked one about 30 yards right in the water. It wasn't even close. Um, so, you know, distance with accuracy would be great. Uh, but, you know, looking at 18, it's not really gettable in two. So, you know, you, you have to get it up there and try to get up and down. So it's, it's that that weird combination of, of being able to hit it really long. Um, but kind of knowing when to, when to turn it back, I think is big for me. Cause there's holes where I don't need everything I have. You know, I don't, I might not even need driver. I just need to get the ball in play, um, and, and have a chance with my iron. So I don't think you can really say, you know, either one was a difference in me making the cut, uh, at the Honda, but I would say overall, I didn't ship it well at the Honda and still made the cut. So, uh, you can take that for what it is. I, I feel like I didn't chip great. I didn't get up and down on a couple part on the on a eighteen a couple days. Um, I did chip in out of the bunker, I think on seventeen, which with a stadium crowd, which was incredible. Probably the highlight of of my career so far. You know, sitting there three over par through sixteen, and you know, holing out from the bunker and having a lady. It was funny. I was I was sitting there behind the green, and this lady looks at me. She goes. I think Jim Furyk played in front of me or two groups in front of me. She goes, she goes, you know, Furyk just made eight from there, right? Oh. And I was going, glad you didn't tell me that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I had a, I was on the upslope. It was a pretty easy shot. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's tough to, to say one thing's better than the other because I think if I chipped it well that week, I'm probably under par through, through two rounds. <clears throat> so... You know, you kind of take it for what it is. I think, I think driving for me, ball striking for me is everything. That's that's my game. I, actually, the last few days here at home, I've played. Um, I played a couple days ago and didn't miss a golf shot. Didn't score great because I didn't chip it and putt it great, but I still, you know, shot a solid score because of how well I hit it. So ball striking for me is everything, and that's just, you know, that's my game. Scott asks, who was your favorite pro player to watch when you were a kid? Oh, that's funny. I actually, <laughs> I, uh, I didn't watch a ton of golf as a kid. I played baseball my whole life, and I still don't watch golf. I hate watching golf. Everybody, I, well, some people know that, but I don't watch golf. I did watch the Masters. I did watch Tiger win the Masters last Sunday. I think I was actually getting ready for – I was actually playing a Monday queue. um, I think for the Corn Ferry Tour in Alabama uh, the next day. And I played a practice round Saturday <clears throat> because of bad weather on Sunday, supposed to be. And sure enough, I woke up Sunday and uh, um, the weather was perfect, but I already played a practice round. So I was like, man, who cares? I'm going to sleep in, watch the Masters, watch Tiger win. Um, I'll go practice later and end up Monday queuing the next day, which was hilarious. Um, but no, as a kid, I mean, you know, I think everybody – you know, idolized Tiger just for what he did. I think it's it's coming out a lot this week of just how dominant he was um, because of his Masters win last year, and uh, he's kind of been in the spotlight. I think what he won by, you know, what, 12, 13, something ridiculous one year. Um, I don't know. I watched Tiger a lot. I think, if anything, I had a favorite, a favorite player for a while. Um, Matt Kuchar was kind of one of my favorites for a while. I don't know why he was, but... I think as of recent, like my favorite golfer to watch is probably um, probably Xander Shoffley. Is is kind of yeah. I love his game. That's that's I don't know why that guy he kind of stuck out to me. But um, you know, even like being at the Honda though, it, it's been good for me because you know when I'm there, I'm sitting on the range and and I. It's funny. I was watching a video of my swing the other day on the range uh, from face on, so I can see people in the background, 
<clears throat> and Gary Woodland's in the background. And, you know, I didn't even see him in the range when I was playing, you know, when I was practicing. And so, I don't know, I never really had that, like, big fan of, of players. And I think that's helped me a lot, kind of stay focused in these tournaments and stuff like that. So I was never a huge fan of, of anybody, but I do have a few guys that, that I like. I've got one last question here from William, and he says, I know you talked about your nerves, but how do you compartmentalize them and stay in the zone? How do you block out the noise? <laughs> well, there's some noise you can't block out. There's, I, I learned that real quick at uh, at the Honda. People just talk. They don't care. It's, it's something I didn't really expect, um, but people just talk. And uh, I think nerves-wise, I think <clears> – <throat> um, you know, you just have to think about something. You got to think about. Uh, you got to train for it. It's something that that I do. I, I train for it in practice. It's something where, you know, in college we had this all the time where we do putting drills, and our coach would just kind of. You could see our coach. He was just walking around on the hill, just watching everybody putt, and he would kind of count how many. You know, say you have to make 25 in a row, three footers or whatever. You get on 24, and he knows it. And he asks you. He said, "What number are you on?" You know, all of a sudden you're locked in. You're locked in. You're locked in. And then he distracts you and says, what number are you on? And you're like, oh, shoot, I'm on 24. I need to make these last two. And so he brings the whole team over. You got 10 guys just sitting around the hole, a couple guys snickering, you know, kind of talking smack to you. And you got to make two putts. And so I don't think there's a way to just go out there and, and block it out. You know, I think it's Sanderson. My, uh, two years ago, the first time I really, you know, had to deal with, with – you know, a crowd and big nerves. Um, I struggled a little bit. I think I was distracted by the crowd, but it's something you just have to train. I think it's, it comes with experience too. Obviously I think just playing the Honda was huge for me getting to, you know, really, you know, feel like any tournament I play from here out is going to feel small compared to that, especially, you know, with all this going on, we might not have, you know, might not have fans coming up. Um, but yeah, it's just, you got to train it, whether that's just, I mean, you can do it, especially if you're younger. I mean, you can do it. I do it actually to the to the high school kids out here at my course. You know, we'll all be doing putting drills or whatever it is, and uh, and you know, you you ask them just like my coach did. You know, what what number are you on? And if they're close to the end, bring everybody around, make everybody watch, talk a little smack to them, and make them make a putt. And it's funny to watch because I was the same way. You know, you watch this kid make 20 in a row with ease. You know, not looking up, not looking at anybody, and then all of a sudden. Uh, you put 10 kids around him and he doesn't even hit the hole from three feet. And it's like, what are you doing? I mean, you haven't missed. You almost hit so many putts that there's a line in the green. It's impossible to miss. And then I bring somebody over and you've got no chance. So it's something that, you know, I think is an ongoing process. I think for anybody to say that they aren't nervous or they don't have nerves is a liar. <laughs> I think even, I think even Tiger. Even all these guys that are, I mean, Tiger on the 18th tee at the Masters, you think he's just, I mean, completely calm. There's no way. you got to feel something. Uh, we're all human. We all kind of have that, you know, oh, don't mess up. I think that that's the, the, the process in your mind has to be different. You know, I think in the past it was kind of, oh, don't mess this up instead of let's go get it. You know, it's kind of kind of reversing the way you think. Uh, I was always kind of anti, like, let's not screw up. Let's not you know, make sure not to hit it here instead of like, let's hit it here. Let's be specific with, you know, where we want the ball and let's get it there. And so, uh, it, it's been, it's been tough, but I love the little, I mean, I love the little competitions on the greens, even with high school. I mean, even me now I'll, I'll be doing a putting drill and I'll invite a couple kids over and say, Hey, watch this. I got to make these two, or I got to start over. And I still get nervous. And these are, you know, some of my good buddies that I practice with all the time. And, you know, they're all kind of laughing at me and it's been a, it's been a cool little, uh, it's been a cool little thing that I learned in college and, and I brought it home and I think it's been good for all of us. That's great. I, I love being able to bring in kind of a real, real life type setting to just put a little extra pressure on, make the practice a little bit more real. Only way to do it. So, all right, man, before we let you go, how have you, uh, how have you been handling the stay at home? What's been kind of your guilty pleasures, any Netflix stuff, any binging, any good reading lately? It's funny. Uh, I did. I've I've been on Netflix. Uh, luckily, I don't have a TV in my room. I took it down to Florida when I moved, and I left it. Um, I gotta go get that soon. It's this is not the time to not have a TV. So, 
I've been falling asleep in the living room a lot watching TV, um, but I luckily found this iPad, old iPad, a, a little while ago, and I've been watching, uh, I just started, what did I start? I started something last night, The Stranger, uh, it's kind of a weird little show on Netflix, uh, it's about some stranger that, that comes up and pretty much says, hey, they have information about you, it's, it's a weird, something I hope never happens to me, but a stranger comes up and says they have information that you know, you need to know, and it leads to a lot of people getting killed, and I, it's a weird show, I don't know, but, um, but I've been, man, I've been snacking pretty hard, <laughs> that's, the, that's the hard part, is I'm trying to work out, and I'm actually about to work out when I hop off of here, because there's nothing to do today, I think the golf course is closed, so, um, I've been snacking a lot, I don't know why, I'm big on this Dove dark chocolate, oh man, the little it's like the little squares so it's just i started that uh i actually started that a couple of weeks ago but it man it's it's been bad i i just i can't help it i think last night actually i i went to bed about midnight i've been staying up watching netflix i kind of <clears throat> stay up late just um just to sleep in on purpose most days but uh maybe not the best thing but you know i'm still getting my eight to ten hours it's fine um but man i was just sitting there last night and i was like i could really just eat some dove chocolate right now and i went downstairs and got some i shouldn't do it but i just i can't help it so uh you know it's been tough but i'm just looking forward to maybe things getting back to normal soon and you know hopefully getting up. i was really hoping i was looking forward to you know coming up to kansas city and um i think you know corn Ferry plays in springfield and kansas city and in illinois and all that and then hopefully sneaking over to st louis to see you but yeah. i'm kind of kind of waiting to see how that goes right now so I think it's been a year or two since I last saw you. So, yeah, we haven't we haven't seen each other in person in it's been a year <laughs> and a half at least. Virtual coach, I don't even think it's, you're like a you're like a robot. It's not even real. It feels like <laughs> sometimes, but no, I'll get back in. I think you got a new facility too, so I'm looking forward to. Didn't you or no? Are no, you no, working same, on that or same spot, same spot. Oh, I thought you might have got a new one, but we'll get back to it soon, hopefully, and see what we can do. One of these days. Yeah. All right, brother. Well, thank you for joining us again this this time on the uh, the live podcast. This is a little different different animal yeah. doing it live. So it's kind of fun. But, yeah. Uh, we'll be keep we'll be keeping tabs on you for sure, and you know we'll let everybody in the 18 strong community let know what's going on with Hayden and keep up with uh, all the tournaments and what's going on. Hopefully, we'll see you guys out there playing for some for some trophies, playing for some status in the very near future. Appreciate it, man. Good to see you as always. I'll uh, I'll holler at you soon. Sounds good, brother. All right, everybody, I want to thank you for joining us once again on the 18 Strong Podcast on the live version here. I want to thank our sponsors, Link Soul, for everything that they do for the podcast. And once again, if you are interested in joining and putting in an entry to win the weekly giveaway from Link Soul, we're going to be giving away shorts, we're going to be giving away hats, polos, everything. Go to 18 Strong on the iTunes podcast app and leave a rating and review, and that will give you eligibility for the weekly giveaway, which we'll announce every single week here on the 18 Strong Podcast. I do want to remind you that if you're not in our private Facebook group, the 18 Strong Movement, go over there and join the conversation over there. Hayden's in the group. A lot of our other guests that have been on the show are also in the group, and we just continue the conversation over there on Facebook. All right, I want to thank you once again for being here. We'll talk to you very soon. Train hard, practice smart, and play better golf.